What amazes me about the process, and we've had lots of directors on this program, is that it's pretty much accepted that they're going to have seven or eight writers get involved in the script at one time or another. They'll start with somebody and they don't like it, so they go to someone else, they don't like that, and they go to someone else. And in the end, it's about eight names. Well, there's a convention of all the people who've written, uh, who were who did some writing on Tootsie. They meet every year. Oh, that's they fill right. an entire <laughs> hall. I'm the only one who uh, doesn't show that's up. That's what's different about, and that's why I think independent movies have a better shot of making sense, you know, because yeah. these guys, yeah. first of all, they couldn't have afforded seven or eight exactly. writers. They're yeah. stuck with me. That's the only thing they've got. And, you know, it's like this experience was the opposite of John Gregory Dunn and his book Monster, you know, where I think Up Close and Personal was had 28 drafts right. and seven or eight different yeah. writers, you know, and uh, I, when it came out, I, I wrote him a postcard. I said, I, I love your book, Monster. I said, reading it made me almost grateful to be poor. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, those, doing that Hollywood system, you get a lot of money, but well, then I, it ends. Know, I, I, I had a play called Happy Birthday, Wanda June, yeah. which was with Kevin McCarthy and uh, Marsha Mason, who was nobody then, and Diane Least. And, God, we were running fine down in the village. And it, they got like the Harlem Globetrotters. It's just such great ensemble actors. And then Hollywood bought the thing. And they got Rod Steiger to replace Kevin McCarthy. They got Susanna York to replace Marsha Mason. And God, it did not work at all. And, uh, I had forgotten about that. Yes, I had a movie made of something of mine, and I had blanked it out. Just take the English patient. Did you all read the book or not? Did anybody read the book? Yeah. Did mm -hmm. you like the movie? Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I mean, because it really so. was an example of a book that this. Well, he got to that write the author the says. He, but he wrote the screenplay. He got to write the screenplay. He was. He wanted to write the screenplay. Mm -hmm. That's a big question. Do you want to write the screenplay? I, I have no. Knowing interest that it has in to be different. Pardon? Knowing that it has to be different to some extent, because if this, yeah. the, just simply the number of pages would fill three hours. Right. Of, I mean, yeah. the, the painful part of that was cutting out even stuff that we had filmed, right. which because the, the rough cut was three hours and 15 minutes, and you got to get under two hours, so you, we had to cut. You were very well uh, served. Oh, yeah. And, and, and in spite of that, I think the book is, is somehow funnier. Because mm -hmm. you don't get the, in, you know, there's no way to get that interior process of the, guy, the guy's mind. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably more moving, the, uh, you know. But, I, but on the other hand, I think there are things that the people in the movie did which are better than I the agree novel. Yeah. You know, there, yeah. there's touches, like uh, Rose McGowan, who is the, the dream girl of the, the, the guy who's the nerd. And when she meets him and, and uh, says, what do you, what's your favorite sport? He says, basketball. She says, mine too. And she reaches over and gives him this little touch. You know, it's just right, that right, was, you right. think, oh my God, the guy's blown away. You know, that wasn't in the book, but her gesture, right. you know, those yeah. little things that actors yeah. bring the to The actor's craft. Uh, you went out to Sundance. You wrote a piece yes. about this in GQ. Yeah. That was a good experience for you? It turned out to be uh, because our movie was bought. Uh, and it's, uh, but I, I got to tell you, the two or three days before we knew it was bought, uh, I had my first Maalox since I'd lived in Hollywood, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was very tense. And uh, the first night we were screened, uh, there were other parties and goings on and premieres, and some people left with, oh my God, what's going on? So the great relief, A, was when we were bought by Gramercy, which is one of the top distributors, and B, we had a screening in Salt Lake City, which was called, that's for real people rather than Hollywood people, and they laughed and cheered and did all the right stuff, and we were fabulously yeah. relieved. Here's a clip from Going All the Way. Uh, take a look at this. Man, what I wouldn't give for a nice new piece of ass right now. What about dating? What about Buddy Porter? Hmm. Yeah, well, Buddy's, um, you know, she's, 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 uh, she's nice, she's good, you know, she's, she's Buddy. She's available. <laughs> right, exactly. See what I'm saying? It's not. It's not just getting laid. What? That's not it. It's, it's something else, right? It's something, something extra. It's a little something different. Exactly. Exactly. It's something different. You got it. I mean, 
Say you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, right? Say, I don't know, peach pie, okay? Now, fine, great. Maybe you love peach pie. Maybe peach pie is great to you. But, but that's all you get? I mean, morning, noon, and night, peach pie, breakfast, lunch, dinner, peach pie, peach pie, day in, day out, day in, peach pie. I mean, for God's sake, maybe you want some blueberry one day. Isn't there wrong with that? I mean, maybe, you know, maybe you want some, some, some chocolate cream. Lemon chiffon. Lemon chiffon. God. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like that what we've seen, yeah. don't we? <laughs> did, he, did he study your mannerisms? Well, actually, the two actors, Ben Affleck and Jeremy Davies, came out before the shooting. Uh, Mark Pelling had wanted them to hang out with me and a friend of mine who was like the model of the character Gunner, a guy yeah. I went to high school with right. named Ted Steak. And the, the four of us hung out, and we told them stories of when we were in high school and took them to the Red Key Tavern and places we'd been to. So they really, yeah, they watched us and, and got, got our mannerisms and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What do you think would make it hard to write a screenplay? I think if you had to write uh, something, for instance, if, if, they wanted, if they had wanted to make that novel, which is set in 1954, if they said you have to update it to the 90s, that would have really been, been hard. hard. Because that's and, not what you know. And I'd have been betraying the story. You know, I think it would be hard if you had to write something to order that you didn't believe in that you felt was just some hokum that somebody had told you to do and, and you didn't have your heart in it. Or but there are people who can do oh, this. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, a producer yeah. comes to you and has a dream it, mm -hmm. and says, here's my dream and uh, you fill in the blanks. It's impossible. You have to fail. Yeah. You, oh, you do. You couldn't you do that. You have to fail. How can, how can I get your dream and, and put it on paper? If he's a smart producer and you come up with something good but different he'll accept that but you can't reproduce this thing he's been walking around you know and it, it's an awful experience it seems to me you have to fail so you bring in 16 more writers is any of anything you've written that you would want to write the screenplay for I just don't think I can do it again it seems to me like a doctor practicing law or, or whatever and but I, aren't I you tempted to try <sighs> no I'm, 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 I'm perfectly content with the uh, Book form, I am tempted by plays, which are Your, different uh, from yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I... Most novelists don't realize that drama is dance, that the people have to move, and so they have them talking all the time. Yeah. You know, Kurt, I think one of the things that you feel that way is that you said you were born in 1922, and in the 50s, like when I got out of college, the idea, I didn't know anybody who wanted to write a movie. That was kind of low class, you know, like you, you would be looked down on as a writer. You if know you anybody who there. doesn't want to write a movie now? And I now, <laughs> the guys, the same kids now who come out of college who would have been the guys wanting to write novels now want to do movies or direct movies. It's and a should. whole other, yeah, and should. And should, exactly. yeah, because uh, the technology yeah. has changed radically. Right. So you can tell a story better? Oh, I don't, without doubt, with actors and, and music and... Uh, you then, bet. But, but if that's true, you still don't write for a televi for a visual audience, do you? No, because I can't. Uh, and uh, well, what in what I've said is a, a novel used to be an important form of entertainment, particularly in northern climates where there was nothing else <laughs> to do in the winter time, and so it was worthwhile learning to decode twenty six phonetic symbols. Ten numbers and eight punctuation marks and idiosyncratic arrangements in lines. People learned how to do this, which is like learning how to play the French horn, because it was the only way they could get entertained in the winter time, and that's all over with now. It's not necessary.